welcome back. So um, as you can see here, um, another night video. Uh, we are filming at, you know, nine-ish o'clock at night. My daughter came all the way down from Richmond uh, to help me film this video today. Uh, if you're new here, hey, I'm Krista from Plant Lux. I really want to thank you guys so much for supporting my channel and, you know, getting me in the algorithm so that other plant lovers like you, like me, can have some plant content and have some fun here online, uh, learning about plants and enjoying each other's company with plants. So today I am here to talk to you about Raphidophora tetrasperma. I've heard it called Raphidophora tetrasperma. I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I know it's also known as a mini monstera. And um, although they're, they're actually not related, come to find out, but they look the same, okay? Anyway, so we're going to talk about, you know, some care tips and tricks, and we're also going to talk about, you know, tissue culture versus, you know, um, the, the, the actual, I'm not really sure what the biological name to say here is or scientific name, but the actual plant versus a tissue culture made kind of plant. And we're going to talk about, you know, just some sort of common things that might pop up if you have a Raphidophora tetrasperma also known as mini monstera. So let's just get right into it, shall we? Hey, if you are new here, subscribe, hit that notification button to be informed of when I post new videos. And yeah, so let's do that. And try to hit that thumbs up for me. And I'm sorry about the music in the background. If you hear some music in the background, it's because this is the witching hour in the household, nine-ish o'clock-ish. People are doing homework. People are working out. People are blasting music. It's a coping mechanism. It's a real thing. Anyway, let's talk about plants. Here we go. All right, so on my right here, we have this gorgeous giant who, if I could stand up just to give you like a rough frame of reference. I think I got this in May-ish, April-ish timeframe. I am not kidding you when I say that when I first got this plant, I chopped it to a nub and it was no bigger than one leaf per step. But it really has taken off, and here are the reasons why. Number one thing, lighting. Lighting is essential to plant growth. Um, and I have this in a south-facing window, and you cannot have it so much so in direct sunlight to where leaf scorch happens, because I actually have it facing this direction in the sunlight. So this is what happens if it's in too much direct sunlight. You get leaf burn. So just so you know, you get leaf burn. So you wanna pull it back a little bit, okay? That's essential. So I do have this pulled back maybe about 18 inches, two feet or so to try to, to get it away enough so it's getting really good south facing light but at the same time it's also um benefiting from you know the photosynthesis aspect of having it in a south facing window of course okay so lighting is key um with that said i also have these propagations over here whoopsie this is a propagation that was in a north facing window and you can tell that it came from this plant because the leaf shape and structure is pretty much the same. And obviously it's ready to be staked up, okay? And repotted, up potted. Um, yeah, it's there, it's, it's totally ready. And this, because this guy grew so incredibly fast, I absolutely know this guy is also gonna take off as well. Um, so, you know, this propagation from this plant, good job. I have this in a terracotta pot, and this I've kept in a plastic nursery pot. I tend to like my propagations in nursery pots because they're small, and when they're growing, they need a lot of water to sort of acclimate. Um, I propagated in water, so propagation, okay? Uh, propagation for this particular plant, in my experience, is best done in either water or sphagnum moss. I have had no success in soil. I chopped this plant to a nub. I put all the propagations around it, no success. Now, granted, I'm sure some people have, some planty people have done that, 
uh, and that's great. However, I find it much easier to propagate via water or sphagnum. This was a water propagation and it did very well. This was a sphagnum moss propagation and it's, it's doing very well. Soil propagations were all fails, okay? No success with soil propagation. Now granted, that might have something to do with the watering. I'm not really sure, um, but I just know there was no success. Okay, um, so if I were to give you a tip of the, you know, a, a trick of the trade or whatever you call it, I would say if you really want to guarantee that you'll have success, in propagation, I would just stick to what works. Water always works. There's, I have had no failures with water. Sphagnum moss, I've had a few. So I would say water is like the tried and true method for this plant. Okay, now let's talk about um, humidity. So we've talked about how, you know, south facing window, north facing window, both successful, faster grower, not as fast. Obviously, it has to depend on you know how much light it's getting, photosynthesis, you know, its food, the whole nine yards on that. Okay. So with humidity, obviously, if you have it in a south-facing window, you're going to want to have a humidifier nearby, sort of pumping humidity into the air. North-facing window, you know, it's 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 not a needy plant for humidity. All I'm saying is that if you have it in the sun, you want to make sure that there's moisture in the air. Uh, that's pretty much it. Other than that, it's not a needy plant with humidity, but I feel like it does grow faster if there's humidity nearby. So take it or leave it. Those are my two cents on it. <laughs> so there's that. Um, also good to note, another thing about this plant is um, it, it's a vining plant. So if you put a stake in the soil, and it grows up, the plant will get larger. Um, Taylor, I don't know if you can pan it or not, but if you can see the difference of stalk size here and show them, okay, so look, this is where I chopped it. It's, it literally was chopped to a nub. It was this big when I chopped it down. And, and since April, it's grown at least, I would say what, Taylor, is that four feet? Yeah. At least four feet. So this just goes to show you that staking it up and giving it optimal conditions, notice how the, the, the stalk size down here, stalk, I meant stem, stem size down here is much, much different than the, you know, like the stem size up here. It's very much larger up here. And it continues to get larger as it goes up. As, as is the case, honestly, for most vining plants, because Usually the stems at the bottom are much smaller than, you know, the stems at the top. That's just how it works out. So tip, tip for you if you're interested in propagating and growing and, and you want a really nice full Raphidophora tetrasperma, you're definitely going to want to use some stakes. Okay, that leads me to the next thing that I want to talk about. So staking. Uh, this plant has outgrown these stakes. Uh, I would say by about a foot, um, and the, the, the width of them. It's not, the stake itself is smaller than the plant stem. So if you're really, really hardcore interested in having a Monstera, uh, excuse me, a mini Monstera or a Raphidophora tetrasperma, staking it up, making it a gorgeous beauty like this one, I have to take these little tiny stakes out now and I need to put larger, more thickness, uh, wider stakes in here in order to give it the kind of support that it needs in order to grow up. And I have a feeling that if I did that, this thing would grow 12 feet tall. I just need, need larger or, or wider, um, you know, stakes for it. So, you know, but, but here's how I started it though. I started with these very skinny bamboo stakes and I used some um, you know, floral tape to tie it to there, or you could use twine. Uh, that's completely your choice. I just use floral tape because it's super flexible and it's really gentle on the plant. Um, but in another video that I staked up my pothos, I use floral wire um, 
and I did that from another Monstera Deliciosa that I have. So I've had success with all kinds of different ways to stake up a plant, but for this particular plant, I've had, you know, as sort of like a starter project, I use these bamboo stakes. They are, I think they come in six to a package at Lowe's, and I think they're, what, Taylor, how much did you pick those up for? $3. Yeah, like between three and five dollars, and there's enough stakes for a project, and it, they really did do the job. Uh, ever since we, I staked this up with stakes, it has grown, I would say, probably at least two feet, maybe more. Um, and it really happened quite quite quickly. Um, so with that said, you know, in order to get the, the bigger, you know, show-stopping sort of centerpieces, and I, I'm telling you, I, I plant gaze at this baby all the time now that it's big. I cannot believe that it happened because it didn't take much time at all. And I know that you cannot go out and buy a plant like this. Like, I've never seen one like this in the store. Um, at least around where we live, right, Taylor? Have you ever seen one like this? Nope. So, it's so, I'm very proud of it because I literally did chop it and I didn't even think it was going to survive. The nub, it was like this big of a nub. I thought I was like a propagating genius and come to find out all those propagations failed. And then I learned to stick them in water. And, the, you know, th this happened as like, a mercy grow on part of the plant. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so loving, loving that. All right. The, the next thing I'd like to talk about, what about like tissue culture, um, you know, Raphidophora tetrasperma versus, you know, just your actual Raphidophora tetrasperma. They actually do look like different plants. So this is a propagation. Taylor had bought me for Christmas uh, last year a Raphidophora tetrasperma, or actually it was for my birthday, now that I think of it, um, that it actually came from China, <laughs> and it was a really nice plant. Um, and it was very small, but we decided we were gonna propagate it, and so we did that, and so here is one of the propagations. Another propagation that we did is this one, okay? And I want you to kind of take note of how large the leaves are on this one, and how the shape is very sort of oval-like, okay? Look at the shape of these leaves and notice how different the leaf structure is from a Raphidophora tetrasperma that's the original, okay? This is an original as is this. The leaf shape and structure is quite a bit different. It's much more flat and this one is a tissue culture for Fitophora tetrasperma. The leaves are much thicker and the shape is much closer and it's more slit-like than this one, which has an interest and more interesting shape to the leaf. They almost honestly look like different plants. Wouldn't you agree, Taylor? Yeah. Being a plant person, they kind of, they look very similar, but they kind of look different in, in their presentation. So this I find, and, and, and again, this is only because I have not had this in a south facing window. I have been very uh, particular about the placement of this one. Um, my original one is not in the video. I did chop it to a nub like I did this one, thinking it would just shoot up growth, but maybe that's because I need to pot up. I need to up pot that so that it has like more nutrients or something. It's, it's needing something in order to take off. It needs probably a, a larger pot with, with fresh soil. We're gonna talk about that in a second. But this is a propagation you know, if I, if I were to try to grow a giant like this, I would again put it in a south-facing window, pull it back a little. Obviously, it's not failing in, you know, like the size of the leaves. It just doesn't have the same kind of growth rate as the tissue culture. This tissue culture was taken around the same time as, as this propagation. And you know this seems to grow a lot faster, and I'm not quite sure is the scientific reason why, but the tissue culture version of this plant seems to grow a little bit faster. Um, you know this propagation is a little bit older than this one, 
but yeah leaf shape different leaf size different so if you get a tissue culture or fit for a touch of sperma I'm not sure when the leaves get larger but I definitely know that these leaves are bigger than the tissue culture leaves and they're different shape of fenestration or I guess those are called splits because they're not holes they're splits little different finish uh, excuse me a little different leaf split than this anyway kind of interesting if you think about it and if you're new to rifidophora tetrasperma or maybe you are a, like a like a plant person and you never really thought about the differences between the two uh it's it's quite interesting to me and, and i feel like it would be interesting to anyone who's a plant person uh yeah so it's fun to experiment and just check out and just like kind of feel this out because it's definitely been a planty experience that i wanted to share with you and i'm glad i got to share it today um i think the only other thing that i want to talk about really with this plant is soil because i'm going to be just straight up honest with you i don't i don't have time to make my own soil and you know i i have a full-time job it seems to be like more than a full-time job right now and and I, I i have a bag of miracle grow in my garage and it works so i scoop out their miracle grow potting mixture and this is the results and um if i had more time on my hands to experiment with coca coir coir and you know perlite and you know whatever else is out there i, I would love to do that but for now, it, the Miracle Grow is, is what I do. So, Miracle Grow results. <laughs> and I have used Jack's fertilizer in order to help, you know, you know, new, give the plants some nutrients that they need and that also aids in, the, in that effort. I think the only other thing that I've done that I could really count is I have pots that sometimes I water with these metal pots that are made from metal. So, um, you know, when you put the water in there, rust, iron, that kind of thing happens. So that's the only other thing that I could think of that would be a hack or maybe something that, that would aid in nutrients, vitamins, or something that maybe the plant needs. Um, outside of that, uh, Taylor, can you think of anything of maybe that I missed to talk about or um, pests? Oh yeah, pests. That thank you. So the pests in this plant, if obviously if you have spider mites in your house, it could it could be a problem on this plant. You spray it with neem oil. Um, but, but but if I were to spray neem oil on this plant, I'm very well aware of how much it really does need to not have a lot of you know oil substances on its leaves so i would make sure if you spray it with neem oil the next day you spray it off with water that's what i would do um or maybe even possibly like eight hours later i would spray up um spray it off with water in order to let the the leaves be able to oxidize and do what they do um a common problem with what i've seen with the original only the original version though not with with the tissue culture version the original version seems to have like a water retention thing uh going on in the leaves so if you overwater it or underwater it it starts to do this process i don't know if you can zoom in taylor but it'll look dark on the underside of the leaf and that's completely normal the plant looks healthy otherwise i wouldn't do anything to the plant per se but if it's in a terracotta pot like this one, I might take it out of the terracotta pot, up pot it, give it some fresh soil. And then what I would do is um, make sure that I'm watering it on a regular schedule. It's never overwatered, it's never underwatered. This is a plant that really, really, oopsie. This is a plant that really, really enjoys having a regular watering schedule that um, you know, where you don't miss a watering. It, it doesn't look, it, the only sad thing it does is the leaves will droop and then you will have this happen. Um, you know, so I wouldn't worry too much about it if you've had this, this um, result. Just try your best for the future leaves that are coming out of the plant 
to give it a consistent watering routine so that way it doesn't um, you know hold that water retention in the leaves it's it's basically trying to save its own life is what's going on uh, so anyway so that might be something to note if you have an Averfitophora tetrasperma. I've been very serious in this video, I feel like. <laughs> oh, very serious today. I'm very serious. because you've been teaching all day. <laughs> I, I think it is. I really do. And I'm like super in teach mode. What's teach. that movie with um Bueller? Bueller! <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> yes. Totally. And Whiskey's just like one of my students. Look, <laughs> I mean, I'm saying, am I putting everyone to sleep here? I hope not. <laughs> like, come on. Did you talk about how you let yours dry out? Your months, your these dry out between waterings? I do. I, okay, so that's actually a really good point, Taylor. So I do have them in terracotta. Um, and the reason I have them in terracotta is because. I've had success with them in terracotta. Yes, have I missed a watering or two? I have. This responds well though, the tissue culture variety, which is very common in the United States to buy, by the way. I feel like it's more resilient than the original. And I, and I really almost don't wanna say that because I'm, I'm all about the original. But it's almost like the tissue culture version, it's a different plant in some ways. And it's super resilient to drought. Um, I cannot tell you how bone dry this pot has gotten. It's terracotta, but it has gotten bone dry. And I still have this amazing growth going on. It's insane. Um, yeah. Uh, it, how do you know if who's where you're buying from is a tissue culture or not? Beats me. I, I, they, they don't say. They don't. They really don't say. But I will say that the terracotta is, is, a, is a, a good thing for these plants, um, especially if you're an overwaterer. I'm not an overwaterer because I have too many plants. <laughs> so it's, it's not a problem for me, but I do find that terracotta is success, successful with these. Calathea, on the other hand, I would never recommend putting in terracotta. This plant though, definitely. It really, really seems to enjoy it. Um, Obviously, this one is not in a terracotta, even though I have it sitting in one. It's in a nursery pot, and it's plastic, and it's doing well. I missed the last watering, so it's recovering. What happens when you miss a watering is that you get droopy, droopy leaves. It speaks to you. It'll let you know, hey, water me. But no, there's no yellowing leaves. It's completely fine. It really is drought tolerant in that regard. So that's kind of something important that you need to know about this plant. So if you, dang. That dang, watering dang, can. Damn that watering can. Um, so, you know, if you're a plant parent who has a lot of plants or maybe you're just like low maintenance plants, this is the plant for you. Um, it really is not a needy plant. It's just um, a plant that needs sunlight and water. And that's pretty much it, really. It's easy. I mean, fertilization, if you want to grow it quick and fast, awesome this plant is really a great plant i think one of the reasons why it's called a mini monstera is because it does mimic the leaf structure and style even though it's not the same genus um it's not the same species but it is a cool plant and i feel like this is if you're a plant collector or a plant lover or even if you're new to plants this is a plant you should definitely give it a try um, you you might find it online for maybe forty or fifty dollars. It's not a cheap. It's not on the cheap end. It's hard to find plant at least in our area. And it's kind of hard to find online these days. I feel like there's a plant. I don't know, a plant deficit going on right now. I don't know how you feel, Taylor, but it's hard <laughs> to find plants right now. But this is a hard plant to find. If you find it, pick it up. It you won't regret it. You'll absolutely be happy, and it propagates easily. And it's enjoyable to have in your home. And I feel like it's loving me. I can't, honestly, cannot, cannot believe that I cut this down to the nub. I literally cut it down this short. And this happened. I, I did not expect it. I was honestly thinking it would never grow back. Um, and it, it, it's, it, just, it just took right off. And the more it grew, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to stake that up. And then, oh my gosh, I staked it up. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, the stakes are not strong enough to hold the plant because it's leaning now. 
So see, look at this. Now it's leaning. So I need stronger stakes. But this baby is gonna be pretty, pretty magnificent. I just can't, I really did. It's this big, it was that big. And now it's just crazy. And you're probably wondering, why not propagate it more and make more plants? I don't know, I kind of want a big one. Kind of want a big one. So, Taylor, which one of these did I give you for your birthday? I don't know. <laughs> so she gave me one for my birthday, so now I've got to follow up with, with the birthday gift. So I definitely gave her one of these for her birthday, but we just don't know which one it is. I guess you get the first pick. Ooh, leaf burning goes the candle. Not good. So I guess you get first pick. <laughs> you can pick whatever one of these you want. Do you want the tissue culture one? Or do you want the original? I think I want the original one. Yeah, because it is definitely different. I thought you were going to say one of each. Well, I do want one of each. Ah! <laughs> one can be for Christmas, though. <laughs> but I feel like a south-facing window, this baby will look like this in no time. It's fun to watch these things grow. They are so unique. And it's, it's really cool to me that the original is the leaves are thinner. The leaves, the stems, they're just thinner. They're, they're more flaccid. And these ones are just so much thicker. And I don't know, it's bizarre to me, honestly. Anyway, that's my two cents. And I'm super happy that you guys joined me today. I am so glad that you guys are following me and watching my videos. Thank you so much. And hey, subscribe if you haven't yet. I would really love it if you did. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that notification button to get informed when I post new planty content, which I'm trying to do twice a week. But again, I am a teacher and I have a lot of uh, students and I teach college composition, creative writing, journalism, and English 12 and English 11. So, uh, yes, if you have any writing questions, yeah, no, don't, don't send them. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for joining me today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.